this is Megan McDade with Goddess Elite. I'm bringing you a really special deck. I know I say that with all the decks. Um, I'm a deck junkie. Most of you know that I need to go to Decks Anonymous or something like that to, to go off of them. Uh, once you start, you just can't stop. Um, so I um, appeal to all of you, I guess, because we're all in the same boat. Um, I'm going to bring you a deck, which means a lot to me. This is the first deck that I really started working back with back in the 80s. Uh, it's an older deck. Um, it is called the Sacred Rose Tarot. Um, Tarot, Sacred Rose, or the Sacred Rose Tarot. It is a really beautiful, beautiful deck to work with. The person who put it together, um, I get the feeling he was uh, into psychology and used this as a tool to work with his clients. And as every good reader knows, we're an alternative to uh, helping people work through the many challenges that life brings them. Um, this tarot deck is really beautiful for the, from the standpoint that when he designed this, um, the artist went back to this idea of the tree of life, number one, and he also went back to this idea of the colors of stained glass. And you'll find in each one of these cards that the colors could be, they have this luminosity that's, that's just, that just kind of radiates light um, when you look at them. Um, this sense of the stained glass kind of quality. Um, almost every card contains imagery of roses um, and special color significance to the, you know, and correspondences to the roses in each of the cards. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring you the Sacred Rose Tarot. First card that I want you to see is the Fool. This is probably, I'm going to try and do justice to it. It is one of the most beautiful cards in the deck. And I'm looking at the picture here, and what the camera's doing is not even giving it justice. Wonderful, deep, rich colors. Uh, there's that imagery of the trees, the two columns of, of, of the trees in the background. Um, beautiful, beautiful imagery on the floor. Same thing with the magician. You find this luminosity, and you've got this sense of trees on the other side to the right and the left. And of course, the four suits. He works on the high priestess. This is a great card for the high priestess. Definitely, the B and the J standing for Boaz and Joachim. Uh, the two pillars. Uh, reference to the two pillars on the tree of life. It's it's a beautiful rendition of the High Priestess. And there's always this sense in the foreground on each card of this of this empty space like a pool um, of, of stars that you that you look into um, this abyss. Uh, so I want you to notice that again as we as you see in the fool because he's stepping off but you also get this this idea in all of the renditions of the major arcana this, that there's that sense of the feet being planted on the abyss the emperor it's a hierophant Lovers with uh, one uh, person. I think it's the guy. The guy, yeah, it's the guy. He's got his fingers and he's dabbling in the in that pool of of uh, universe that's right at his feet. The chariot. I love this rendition of the chariot. You can see the energy as it just forges ahead and the use of the sphinxes. Damn, that's, that's, that's um, that 
that rendition, that use of the sphinxes in this card is just, I mean, <laughs> look at that. Um, uh, it's just wonderful how he used that, that reference almost to the riddle, you know, and what the sphinx means, which is, it's, I, I love that. Let me help adjust this. The Hermit. This card was one of the cards that really fell in love with in this deck. It's dark, but it's light. It's really wonderful rendition of the Hermits. The Wheel of Fortune almost looks, it looks very, to me, Egyptian. There's a lot of different references to different cultures in this deck. Okay, so we have the Tower. They are pitching headlong down and they are screaming. But notice the light that shoots through the windows and how the tower can sometimes be helpful in bringing it up. So, good one. Strength. Great strength card. I love the rendition of the eyes and, and just the whole way that the characters are drawn. I'm um, going to bring you, here's the hangman. But this death card, which is coming up, holy, this is, wait till you see this. Ta! I mean, who can be a tarot reader, a lover of tarot, and not look at that image of death and go, wow, it takes the breath away. It really is. Um, I didn't show you the backs of the cards. The backs of the cards are great, too. Um, Temperance and the devil. Uh, the devil card is wonderful. I I love this rendition of the devil. It is so well done, stylized. It's just the art is just incredible. The star, I love the star. And you see that open pit of 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 the universe um, at her feet. The moon. Um, and the sun. This is probably one of the best suns that I've ever seen in the deck. This rendition of the sun. It is so wonderful. The child gazing at his, her reflection in the pool of stars. I mean, come on. It is just, it is just phenomenal. The um, symbolism in these cards is just so well thought out. Uh, judgment and the world. Just going to breeze through some of the uh, pip cards, uh, give you an idea of what they're about, swords, but you'll see that the imagery in all of these cards is as detailed as the imagery in the major arcana. So you get this sense of somebody who put a lot of work into this deck. This one always reminds me of, uh, it's almost Father Christmassy, the Six of Wands. Um, Ten of Swords. I think you guys like that. Take a look at that one. Um, uh, five of Swords. Whew. But it is beautiful imagery. Um, here's a good one that really shows you those roses. Ten of Cups. Um, oh, I love this one. The Three of Cups. Love this Three of Cups. Um, three of Wands. And in each one of these, you get that sense of the two trees. In the background too. Um, uh, this is a great one. The Four of Wands. Look at the faces of the children and they're running and the, that almost looks, those rods almost look, it's not that bower kind of a look, it almost looks like a henge, like a stone henge that's standing there uh, and it's been standing there for some, I mean it's just the the uh 
the imagery is just so beautiful. I'm not going to do too many more reveals on the cards in this deck. I'm going to leave it to you to come in and buy one, um, take it home, and enjoy it. It is just um, one of the best decks that I think has been created. Uh, and it is uh, an older deck. Just toast to tell you that, you know, sometimes older things can be better. <laughs> Me. Um, and all of us of the, uh, of the vintage generation. So, thanks for tuning in to another one of my deck reviews. You guys take care, and we'll get you another one soon. Bye-bye.